In this video, I'm gonna critique my first resume I ever wrote and walk you through the process of how I wrote it. So therefore you can learn how to write your first resume. The first thing you need to write is your name, your address or place you wanna find the job, um, and then your contact information. Over here, you should definitely write your school email and it should be something along of, you know, first name, last name, or it could be, you know, the first letter of your first name, something like that, something easy. Don't keep the school's email that they wrote, which is like, you know, for me, it was like DB and then a bunch of numbers. Next, what you want to put is education because that's your big selling point. So for me, I wanted to keep everything consistent. So I wanted to show first, I went to NYU and then next, the name of the, so it was part of NYU and then the name of the school is Tandon School of Engineering because they have a lot of, you know, branches and it's in New York. Then the next line, I wrote what my major is. You should write what your major is. You know, in civil engineering, if you're structural focused, you should write it over here. And then you write your respective graduation date. So for your GPA, include your GPA if it's above a three. Over here, you see I broke it down to major GPA and minor because my overall GPA was actually a 2.998. So I couldn't round it up. So instead, I broke it down to my major GPA and minor GPA. You could definitely space this out the way I did. I, uh, as you can see, I didn't have a lot of stuff to write. So I kind of try to make it pretty and you know space it out as most as possible, but still make it legible. Next, I skip the line again, take up space. So I transferred. So again, GPA if it's above a three, graduation date is important. I was in a pre-engineering program, so that's also very important to write if you are in any program. So write that. As you can see, honors, honors is down here. I should have included honors over here, especially because they're both involved with school, right? So honors should be over here. So it should be education, then honors then technical skills. Going on to honors, just write down whatever it is uh, over here, the way I formatted it, or you could do the same thing. You could write the name of the honor or society you're part of. And then over here, you go write down, write down the dates. So you wanna know when exactly, and you wanna keep it consistent. So thing and then dates. Okay, technical skills. Then you should write all your technical skills you know how to use. So for technical skills, the way it works is, if you know how to use it, write it down for sure. If you're familiar with it, also write it down. You shouldn't write down familiar with this, not familiar with that, or even very good with this or super familiar with this, because by writing you're familiar with one thing implies you're not familiar with everything else. Even if it's true, it's gonna come out in an interview. So for example, if I don't know how to use Revit, right? I'm not super efficient in Revit. I know how to use it. So in an interview, they would ask me, what's your experience with Revit? So I would answer, you know, oh, I'm not super comfortable with it. And then there, but, on my resume, it's there, and that could get you into the interview, which is the most important part. So include any engineering related software you know. If there's a skill, a software, coding, anything you know how to do, write it down. If you stand out by saying, I know how to code, I know how to video edit, it not only makes you stand out because you know you apply to engineering, but it also makes you an interesting person. And you know, it shows that you're creative and have these other aspects. Not saying it's bad if you don't, but if you do, for sure add them. So as you can see over here, I kind of formatted it. So my engineering skills were one, software because I felt like I had a whole bunch and then programming. What I would say is um, Word, Excel and PowerPoint all could be summarized under the word Microsoft Office. So by writing Microsoft Office, it kind of condenses them. Anyways, moving on. So honors, we spoke about it should follow your education. The reason why I put education, honors and then technical skills is because technical skills is your main selling point right after your education. Your first selling point is you have a degree, which means you're learning or you know this stuff. Your next thing should be, now what do you know how to do specifically? Well, technical skills. Well, I know how to do this, that, you know, I know how to use, um, you know, AutoCAD. I know how to use Revit. I know how to use, you know, Excel. And therefore it doesn't take the recruiter or the engineer who's looking to hire you for an internship or your job. They don't need to skim through all your work experience. It's all kind of just listed there. So they know what you use and then they can go kind of search for it if they're interested. Now this kind of brings me into your work experience. So for me, I didn't have any real work experience when writing my first resume. So if I did, the way I would write it is I would still format the same way, you know, the title of the, your position, what company, and then the date. So you write your internships, you could also write here. The reason why I broke it out to work experience and leadership activities was because I didn't have work experience. So I just wrote experience. It would seem weird that I'm putting camp counselor with, you know, my um, concrete canoe and my volunteering work. So I wanted to show uh, two different sides of experience this is the reason why I broke it down. For you, I think most people should write down work experience and then extracurricular or schools activities. If you volunteer, you could definitely write down, you know, volunteering opportunities or stuff like that. Break it down as much as you want to make it legible and easy to follow for the engineer or the recruiter who's trying to look through your resume. 
So the first thing that you want to do is you want to always have buzzwords to start off your sentence, right? So responsible, directed, organized, produced, even by everything you want collaborated, worked with, coordinated. So I wrote collaborated twice here. You should, typically should use other words. I'm going to have in the, in the description, I'll have a link to a PDF of action words that you can use. Hopefully you'll find that helpful. Then again, you know, represented, worked with. The reason why I start off with buzzwords is because most people, when looking at a resume, you're not going to read the whole sentence because it's a lot to take in. If I'm looking at tons of resumes and I get this on my desk, I could kind of already by technical skills, I already could gauge what you do and don't know. Based off of that, I already know that, okay, this candidate doesn't have a lot of work experience. So therefore, I'm not really going to read through all the work experience when I kind of know what they have to offer. But when I do look at their work experience, I'll be like, okay, he was responsible. He directed, he organized. Okay, so this guy seems like he's put together. You're supposed to be pretty specific when writing a resume to give details so it doesn't seem like you're just writing fluff. Each bullet point should say a skill that you do and promote you even more. For example, let's just take a random one. Worked with one other board member to arrange one of three events per semester. Okay, so this first part of the sentence, worked with one other board member, says that I worked along with people. That's what that sentence is doing for me. The second part, arranged one of three per semester. Okay, that's showing I'm organized. Um, so that's what this bullet point is trying to show. So each bullet point should show something that is to your strength if someone actually goes and reads it. If they don't actually read each individual, they could be like, okay, responsible, directed, collaborated, worked with, coordinated, collaborated, represented, worked with. So it sounds like I kind of do a lot of working with people and a lot of collaboration, which as an engineer, that's something you wanna hear. So to summarize, you wanna start off with a, like an action word, end off with something that's good, be specific with what you did, and very important to be consistent with your formatting, keep it organized, make it easy for the eyes. This format, you're all welcome to steal. I'll include this as a blank Word document somewhere in the description, that should be helpful. Uh, yeah, so again, bold and large, board member in bold, the club that you're a part of, the dates next. So it's kind of easy to follow, easy to skim through. Then last, if you're writing your first resume and you don't have a lot to write, which as you can see, I didn't. And a way to humanize you and make you seem like a good candidate or someone you just want to get that conversation going with, you can put interest. So for me, it was basketball, videography, video editing, and puzzles. But if you have something like really cool and you're proud of, include it there, especially if it's something that shows persistence, then you can include that, maybe even add a bullet point. So overall, this, this is a very solid format, very simple also for your first resume. Again, it doesn't need to be all that pizzazz. It just needs to have the information be easy to follow easy to read. Follow for part two. Part two, I'm going to review my latest resume that I sent that I got hired at the firm I'm at now and kind of critique it and give you feedback on what I do like, what I don't like, what I should change and all that stuff. So look around for part two and as always, stay civil.